Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this uh, ninth day of March. It is Saturday, and today's topic is titled, The Conjunction of Great Contrast. And before we get started on all that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he, too, can be your Lord and Savior today if he's not already. And that is the most important thing you can do is... Trust Jesus as your Savior, and he'll wash away all your sin, give you eternal life, and then he will teach you, guide you, direct you into all truth as you desire to live for him and grow in your faith. And that requires going to a good Bible-believing church and getting God's word taught to you and preached to you and then reading your Bible and understanding it and all that good stuff. So, and having a good, solid relationship with the Lord after you're saved and then go tell others about Jesus and what he did on the cross for them and uh, how you got saved so amen praise the lord and so we're going to go ahead and start with the scripture song for today from psalms 8 verse 1 and so let's go ahead and look at this psalm here most of these early psalms were written by david so let's go ahead and look at psalm chapter 8 and get some idea here of this psalm <clears throat> so psalm 8 and let me just get there all right, so Psalm 8, and let's see here. So there's only nine verses to this psalm, so I'll read you the entire psalm, and then we'll get into the scripture song uh, for today. So Psalm 8, it says, To the chief musician upon uh, Gitteth, a psalm of David. And it says here, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, uh, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Hallelujah. So starts out. With that, and it ends with that, so praise God. And now we'll go ahead and grab the scripture song book and we'll sing uh, Psalms 8 1 with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. So let me press play here and we'll sing along with them. All right, so here we go Psalms 8 1. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. That's right. Who has set thy glory above the heavens? All right, let's sing it out. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. How excellent is thy name, O Lord, our Lord. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who hath set thy glory above the heavens lord our lord how excellent is thy name in all the earth how excellent is thy name O lord our lord how excellent is thy name in all the earth who has set thy glory above the heavens? Who has set thy glory above the heavens? Praise the Lord. All right, so I'll put that back to yesterday's, and we'll do those scripture songs again towards the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's topic for the Baptist bread for this ninth day of March, Saturday, 
2024 and is titled The Conjunction of Great Contrast. And uh, I have to do it. I just have to do it because it's, uh, it's great to do it. So <laughs> Brother James does a lot when we um, hear this word. And you know from uh, that uh, TV show, um, Schoolhouse Rock, Conjunction Junction, What's Your Function? Hooking up phrases in. Da, 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 da. Amen. <laughs> All right. So you're probably going to have that in your head for the rest of the time after you listen to this. So sorry about that, but I had to do it. So amen. Okay. So we got here Ephesians 2, 4 is the passage. And it says, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2, 4. And today's author is Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So let's go ahead and look at Ephesians chapter 2 really quick. And I like the book of Ephesians. Good book here. Of course, the Bible's all good. But uh, got Ephesians chapter 2 here. And uh, let's go ahead and look at this, Ephesians 2. And let's go ahead and we got 22 verses here. So let's go ahead and read this in its entirety and get some scripture here. From chapter 2 of Ephesians, and then we'll get into the topic. Uh, so it says here, And you hath he quickened, that means made alive, and you're quickened when you trust Jesus, your uh, Savior, your soul is quickened, that is, made alive, and separated from your body and your flesh. And of course, the flesh isn't saved until the day of redemption, but we are saved, um, our soul is saved, so amen, and uh, redeemed uh, by the blood of the Lamb. So again, it says, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, praise God, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, and created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, ye who, are, who, who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh, for through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto and holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Amen, and praise God for that. 
So that is the entirety of chapter two. And now let's go ahead and get into the topic here for the 9th of March, Saturday, again titled The Conjunction of Great Contrast in Ephesians 2 4. Is the passage again, and it says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us. And Brother Green writes here, he says, The second chapter of Ephesians is resplendent with the reverberations of the grace bestowed on those dead in trespasses and sins who walked according to the course of this world that lived in accord with the prince and power of the air, were children of disobedience, and were wrapped up in the lusts and desires of the flesh and mind, living as children of wrath, Ephesians 2, 1 through 3, which we just read. However, somehow, somewhere, someone confronted you with this little conjunction that was in contrast to anything or anyone you had ever encountered, one who was rich in mercy, full of abounding love and amazing grace, God, praise the Lord, who you were, and he underlines you were, who you were, was creatively changed by the conjunction of great contrast, but God, he writes in big bold letters, in verses 5 through 8 of this blessed contractual conjunction with Christ, we are told who or what we are, and he underlines what we are so we are told uh, who or what we are quickened saved raised up seated above and with great expectancy in the ages to come the wondrous overtones and overtures of christ's riches grace and kindness procured on calvary received by any lost soul that accepts christ's finished work as their only hope are told who we will be, and he underlines who will, we will be, so, and it says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them, verse 10 of the chapter, oh, he says, and don't forget this conjunction that conveys a great contrast, but God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. That's right. That makes what we were able to be what we can be in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So there you have it. If you're saved, born again, you are in Christ Jesus. And uh, that's the greatest thing ever we could do is be saved and what Jesus did on the cross. So that's how much he loved us, that he would do that for us so we can be saved, but you must come to him and trust him as your Lord and Savior so you can be saved. So, all right, so that was a good little topic there for today from the Baptist bread. And I'll put that aside there. I'm trying to figure out where I can put that. I'll put that right there. All right, so now let's go ahead and open up the Daily Strength of Volume 2 book by Douglas D. Stoffer and Andrew B. Ray as we conclude this week on carnality. And this is day 35, Saturday, and it's titled, Our Weapons Are Not Carnal. And here we have 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 4. And it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And then it keeps on going there in uh, 2 Corinthians 10, um, continuing on. So I encourage you to read the rest of that. Uh, chapter there and now for introductory thoughts it says we are to fight the good fight of faith first timothy six twelve. this battle makes it imperative that we understand we do not war after the flesh second corinthians ten three. unlike many of the cults we do not use physical weaponry in our attempts to accomplish the will of god right uh, no physical sword or weaponry can convert the lost to Christ. However, the Bible does instruct us to use the sword of the Spirit. That's Ephesians 6, 17, and this is the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. That's the, what we need to be using. So, and then continuing on, it says, in like manner, we do not have to resort to using physical weaponry to bring about our desired results during the spiritual battles. 
Instead, we flee to God's throne to find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 4.16. So if you're saved, we're to boldly go to God's throne. And it says we must ensure that we do not carelessly allow ourselves to believe that the spiritual weapons are inferior to carnal weaponry. The Bible enforces this thought by reminding us that our weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, 2 Corinthians 10, 4. So amen for that. And that was introductory thoughts. And now for devotional thoughts for children. It says if you want to play instead of doing your chores, but clean up your room anyway, because you remember God said to obey, then you are using God's word as a weapon against sin. Our fights with others and with ourselves should be done using God's word. Jesus gave us a great example when he quoted Bible verses to the devil and he tried to get him to do or as as he tried to get him to do wrong. So Jesus quoted Bible verses to the devil as he was trying to get him to do wrong. So that's for children, and of course you can use that for everyone. So now devotional thoughts for everyone says to what do you resort when you need help in your Christian life? Do you go to your Bible and pray? find the answers you need does this help you to get victory over your sin the spiritual weapons given to us from god are called mighty weapons in the bible how often do you use the weapon of prayer how often do you use the sword of the spirit to convince the lost hmm. good question we should always use those that those weapons of prayer and uh, the sword there in the bible uh, sword of the Spirit to convince the lost. Amen. Now for prayer thoughts. It says, ask the Lord to help you faithfully use your weapons. Ask God to help you see the might of his weaponry. And then the song from the uh, hymn book is titled, To Arms, Ye Saints to Arms. And that's from this actual devotional book. And it is in the hymn book, but I could not find any, any instrumental uh, for that one. So I'll just read you the stances there. Um, for that one and now let's go ahead and read quotes from the next volume volume three week five subject is titled appetite continued so let me read you these three quotes here it says food is one of the necessities to sustain sustain life yet over the centuries man's need for food has been a source of great temptations a believer should be controlled only by the lord at no point should a man be led by the cravings of his body, even that of his appetite, right? Two of the greatest treasures in godly homes involve time spent at the family altar and the supper table. Both help to develop a cohesive family unit and an unbreakable bond. So those are the quotes uh, from volume 3, week 5. Uh, subject, appetite continued. So... And uh, so that's that, and then we'll go over, um, uh, tomorrow will be the start of a new week, and new topic uh, for week six, titled Communication, and communication is very important to communicate with one another, so we'll go over uh, communication, how it's found, and variations, the first usage and last usage in the Bible, how it's defined, interesting fact about it, and Bible study tip, and then we'll go through the week, and then day 36 for uh, tomorrow and it's church day and Ephesians 4:29 is going to be the passage uh, for tomorrow and then I'll give you the more fight on stories book story the more fight on uh, stories book uh, the stories from there and uh, give you those stories for tomorrow and I'll go ahead and put that aside there and we'll get the hymn book here and turn this on so, get this first hymn. So, this first hymn is titled, Oh, for a faith that will not shrink. And this is hymn 675 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. Another one of these, The Trust of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song written by William H. Bethurst, B A T H U R S T, Bethurst, 1796 to 1877. And then Lowell Mason, 1792 to 1872. So there's a story for this one. 
So let me press play here and we'll listen to it first. So here we go. Here we go, try it. <clears throat> Shines more bright and clear when tempests rage without that when in danger knows no fear in darkness feels no doubt. That bears a move the world's red frown, nor heeds its scornful smile. That sin's wild ocean cannot drown, nor its soft hearts beguile. Faith that keeps the narrow way Till life's last spark is fled And with the pure and heavenly ray Lights up a dying bed <clears throat> Lord, give me such a faith as this, and then whatever may come, I taste and now the hallowed bliss of an eternal home. Amen. All right, so that was the hymn there. And now let me read you the story here and then give you the references, and then we'll move on to the second hymn. So it says here, uh, William... Um, Bathurst uh, was born uh, near Bristol, England, growing up in a privileged, uh, or in up in privileged surroundings. As the son of a member of Parliament, the family name was originally um, Braj, B R A G G E, Braj, but was changed when Charles Braj, William's father, inherited the family estate as a graduate of Oxford, William entered the Ang uh, Anglican uh, church to serve as a minister, but grew uncomfortable with the church practices surrounding baptism and burials as dedicated by the Book of Common Prayer, and soon resigned. <laughs> the inspiration for these lines uh, came as Mr. Bathurst labored over a sermon entitled The Power of Faith with a text of Luke 17.5, Lord, increase our faith. <laughs> Hallelujah that you got all that stuff. And uh, hopefully he got saved and all that. So now that was the story. And now the references. We have stanza 1 as 1 Corinthians 2.5 and Philippians 4.11-13. Stanza 2 is Hebrews 12.5 and Isaiah 41.13. 
Stanza 3 is John 16.33 and Psalm 23.4. Stanza 4 is 2 Timothy 1.7 and Colossians 2.18. Stanza 5 is 2 Timothy 4.7 and Philippians 1.21. And then stanza 6 is Romans 10.17 and Hebrews 11.13. So that is the end of the first hymn. So now we'll go ahead and jump to the second hymn here. Put that aside. And this second hymn, like I said, didn't have any um, instrumental to it. So I'll read you the stanzas here and then the story. And then give you the um, uh, references for each of the um, stanzas. So this is uh, one of these, the Spiritual Warfare of the Saint hymns, a spiritual song titled Two Arms, Ye Saints to Arms, hymn 725 in the book. Written by Thomas Kelly, who lived from 1769 to 1855, and John B. Dykes, 1823 to 1876. So, this sounds like a good hymn. Too bad there's no instrumental for it. But let me read you the stanzas here, and maybe you can find an instrumental for it later. Uh, so, the first stanza says, Hark, tis a marital sound to arms, ye saints to arms. Your foes are gathering round, and peace has lost its charms. Prepare the helmet, sword, and shield. The trumpet calls you to the field. Stanza two. No common foes appear to dare you to the fight, but such as own no fear and glory in their might. The powers of darkness are at hand. Resist or bow to their command. An arm of the flesh, excuse me, an arm of flesh, must fail in such a strife as this, he only can prevail, whose arm immortal is. Tis heaven itself the strength must yield, and weapons fit for such a field. And heaven supplies them too. The Lord, who never faints, is greater than the foe, and he is with his saints. Thus armed they, they venture to the fight that thus armed they put their foes to flight stand to five and when the strife is past on yonder peaceful shore they shall repose at last and see their foes no more the fruits of victory and joy and never more their arms employ amen so that's the hymn there and now let me read you the story at the bottom of the page it says thomas kelly educated at Trinity College in Dublin, followed his father to the profession of law. Through his studies, however, Kelly became very earnest in religion, yet with preaching too vigorous for the times, he was forbidden to serve in the diocese of the Church of England. He therefore became independent and labored to his 85th year among his labors were more than uh, 700 uh, hymns on his uh, deathbed. One repeated, The Lord is my shepherd, to which he replied, The Lord is my everything. <laughs> Amen. So that's a good little story there about um, Thomas Kelly. And now let me read you the, uh, give you the uh, references here. So stanza one, we have Psalm 44, 5. In Ephesians 6.12, and then Ephesians 6.16-17. 6, Stanza 2 is 1 Peter 5.8, and Acts 26.18. Stanza 3 is Philippians 3.3, 3, Psalm 27, and 2 Corinthians 10.4. Stanza 4 is Isaiah 40, verse 28, 1 John 4.4, 4, and Ephesians 6.13. Stanza 5 is Hebrews 4.9, Revelation 21.27, and 1 Corinthians 15, 57. So that is the end of the second hymn. And so now I'll go ahead and put this to tomorrow's hymn. And put that there. All right, now it's time to get into the scripture songs again. And then we'll wrap it up after that. So let me put that over there. And do yesterday's scripture song. And then today's again. So yesterday was Philippians 4, 19. So let's press play and sing along with. Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Philippians 419. 
But my God shall supply all your needs right. according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Here we go. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Praise God. All right, now today is one more time. Psalms 8, 1. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. How excellent is thy name, O Lord, our Lord. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who can sent thy glory? Above the heavens, Lord our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. How excellent is thy name, O Lord our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens? Who has set thy glory above the heavens? All right. Well, that'll be about it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topic for the Baptist bread and then the... Um, uh, introductory stuff for tomorrow's day, Daily Strength Volume 2 book topic on communication and then the fight on stories from the More Fight On book and then uh, the hymn for tomorrow so tomorrow will be the 10th, Sunday starting a new week in Psalm 92 verses 13 through 15 are the scripture song verses it says those that are those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. That's the truth. So that will be from Psalms 92 for tomorrow, the 10th. And then the Baptist bread topic for tomorrow will be titled Gratitude. And we have First Thessalonians 5.18 for the passage. And then tomorrow's author is D.B. That is uh, the initials for David Brown, pastor of Central Baptist Church in Decatur, Illinois. And we have our own uh, David Brown at uh, Bible Baptist Church. He's the assistant pastor and youth pastor of Bible Baptist Church. So, But this is not that David Brown. This is a different David Brown, um, pastor of uh, Central Baptist Church in Decatur, Illinois. So he's the author of tomorrow's topic on gratitude. So... Amen. And then the daily strength um, uh, verse for tomorrow, as it is a church uh, day. And we start in on uh, week six on communication. And we'll go through the introductory stuff and all that. And then the passage for tomorrow for day 36, church day, is Ephesians 4.29 for the passage there. And so that's that. And then we do some more fight on stories from the more fight on uh, book here. And this is the cover of the book and it's written by Sam Gipp and uh, 
So let's see here. Tomorrow's stories, we'll do. Um, so we'll do three, but we'll actually go ahead and do four tomorrow. So the first one will be on page 174, and it is titled Not Now, Not Ever. So that's the first story. And then the second story is titled The Pigeon Counselor. So that's the second story. And then the third story will be titled Never Give Up, Never Give In. And then we'll do a, um, a fourth one, and it'll be titled It Was Only Impossible. So we'll do four tomorrow instead of three. So those will be the four for tomorrow. And uh, again, that's from the More Fight On uh, Stories book by Sam Gipp. And uh, so that's that. And then the hymn for tomorrow, only one hymn. And it's titled Have Faith in God. And this is hymn six, seven.